Hi guys, today we'll be listening to lesson seven in our listening and learning Dolce Domum part two. The vocabulary words that you will hear in today's story are blues, as in a noun, meaning a state of depression or unhappiness. Capital is an adjective meaning excellent. Dismally is an adverb meaning gloomily or hopelessly. Forage is a verb meaning to seek, search, or to look around. Perceive is a verb meaning to notice something through the senses, to interpret something in a particular way. And slumber, it's a noun meaning sleep. So as you listen to today's story, please listen for those words and how they're used. So what have we learned so far? We remember we've been talking a lot about themes. And theme is a literary tool used by authors. It's a broad idea that comes up many times over the course of a story. So what are some literary tools that we've learned about so far? Besides theme, we've also talked about perspective. Remember, perspective is through whose eyes are we seeing and experiencing the story. We've also talked about dialogue. Dialogue is set off with quotation marks, and it's those exact words that a character has said. Narration is another literary tool that we've discussed. Narration is all the extra words that are not spoken by characters that give us the background information in the story. It usually gives us ideas about the setting in the plot and how the story unfolds. So let's look at the themes chart to review the themes and where they occur in each chapter. Remember, we've talked about friendship and loyalty. In the beginning, Rat and Mole developed a new little friendship and they've kind of been loyal with each other as they've traveled through the wild wood. Hospitality. Hospitality has been shown by Mole when Rat showed up on the riverbank at his house, took him in and gave him supper. And then hospitality has also been shown by Mr. Badger when they came into his house when they got lost in the wild wood during the snowstorms. Responsibility and irresponsibility. Hmm. Has anybody been irresponsible in our story so far? Ah, Toad. Toad has been irresponsible with his actions of just not really caring about what's going on in the world and how he kind of interacts with everybody. Good. So pay attention to, the, to today's read aloud to see if you recognize these themes and how they continue through our story. Before we get with our story, we're going to start making some predictions. So what does it mean to make a prediction? Dolce Domum, meaning home sweet home. Predict what you think will happen in today's read aloud. This is part two, or the second half of the chapter, which we began in the previous lesson. Dolce Dome, remember, means home sweet home. It's also the plot of the previous lesson. You're going to listen to the end of the previous read aloud. Mole is following his unerring nose down a tunnel. Do you think or predict that they will actually make it back inside of his house? If so, what might happen once he returns to his old home? How might some of the themes play a role in the second half of the chapter? So we need to listen to find out if your predictions are correct. Listen to find out if any of the themes are present in today's read aloud. And listen for your new vocabulary words. Mole end. It was close and airless, and the earthly smell was strong. The mole struck a match, and by its light, the rat saw that they were standing in an open space. 
The space was neatly swept and sanded underfoot. Directly facing them was Mole's little front door with Mole End painted in Gothic lettering over the bell pull at the side. Gothic lettering is a fancy writing style or type font. Mole took down a lantern from a nail on the wall and lit it, and the rat, looking round him, saw that they were in a sort of a forecourt. A garden seat stood on one side of the door and on the other a roller. The mole was a tidy animal and could not stand having his ground kicked up by the other animals into little heaps of earth. Down on one side of the forecourt ran a skittle alley with benches along it and little wooden tables. In the middle was a small round pond. Skittles is a lawn game similar to bowling, and the Skittle Alley is like the bowling alley except outside on a lawn. Here is a picture of a roller, usually made out of metal or a heavy stone to help flatten the earth. Mole's face beamed at the sight of all these objects. He hurried Rat through the door, lit a lamp in the hall, and took one glance round his old home. Immediately, he saw the dust lying thick on everything, saw the cheerless, deserted look of the long-neglected house, and collapsed again on a hall chair. Oh, Ratty, he cried dismally. Why ever did I do it? Why did I bring you to this poor, cold little place on a night like this? The rat paid no heed to him. He was running here and there, opening doors, inspecting rooms and cupboards, and lighting lamps and candles. What a capital little house this is, he called out cheerily. Everything here and everything in its place? The first thing we want is a good fire. I'll fetch the wood and the coals, and you get a duster. Deferred Housekeeping Encouraged by his companion, the mole dusted and polished with energy, while the rat soon had a cheerful blaze roaring up the chimney. He hailed the mole to come and warm himself, but mole promptly had another fit of the blues. Rat, he moaned, how about your supper, you poor, cold, hungry, weary animal? I've nothing to give you. What a fellow you are for giving in, said the rat calmly. Why, only just now, I saw a sardine opener on the kitchen dresser. And everybody knows that means there are sardines about somewhere. Pull yourself together and come with me and forage. Remember, forage means to look for something or to search for it. They went and foraged accordingly hunting through every cupboard and turning out every drawer. The result was not being so, sorry, the result was not so very depressing after all. A tin of sardines, a box of captain's biscuits, nearly full, and a German sausage encased in silver paper. There's a banquet for you, observed the rat as he arranged the table. No bread, groaned the mole. No butter, no, no caviar, no champagne, continued the rat grinning. And that reminds me, what's that little door at the end of the passage? Your cellar, of course. Caviar is an expensive delicacy of special salty fish eggs. Champagne is a fancy, fizzy type of wine. Is rat serious or joking when he says there's no caviar or champagne? He's joking. I'm kind of making fun of him. Rat made for the cellar door and presently reappeared with a bottle in each paw and another under each arm. Now, wherever did you pick up those prints? Make the place look so homelike they do. No wonder you're so fond of it, Mole. Tell us about it and how you came to make it what it is. The Mole 
much cheered by the rat's fine compliments, took time to show off his splendid abode. The rat, though desperately hungry, allowed the mole to hold court. At last, the rat succeeded in decoying him to the table, and had just got seriously to work with the sardine opener when sounds were heard from the forecourt without. Sounds like the scuffling of small feet and a confused murmur of tiny voices. Now, all in a line, hold the lantern up a bit, Tommy. Clear your throats first. Where's young Bill? What's up? inquired the rat. I think it must be the field mice, replied the mole. They go round carol singing regularly at this time of the year. I used to give them hot drinks and supper, too, sometimes. Let's have a look at them, cried the rat, jumping up and running to the door. Housework and carolers. It was a pretty sight that met their eyes. In the forecourt, lit by the dim rays of a lantern, some eight or ten little field mice stood in a semicircle. They had red scarves around their necks, and their forepaws were thrust deep into their pockets. With bright, beady eyes, they glanced shyly at each other. As the door opened, one of the elder ones that carried the lantern proclaimed, Now then, one, two, three, and forthwith their shrill little voices rose up into the chill night air. Builders all this frost frosty tide, let your door swing open wide. Through the wind may follow and snow beside, yet draw us in by your fire to bide. Joy shall be yours in the morning. Here we stand in the cold and the sleet, blowing fingers and stamping feet. Come from far away you to greet, you by the fire and we in the street, bidding you joy in the morning. For ere one half of the night was gone, suddenly a star has led us on. Raining bliss and benison, bliss tomorrow and more anon, joy for every morning. The voices ceased. The singers exchanged sidelong glances, but for a moment only. Then, from up above and far away, down the tunnel they had so light lately traveled, came the sound of distant bells ringing a joyful and clangorous peal. A clangorous peal is the loud clanging or ringing of bells. Very well sung, boys, cried the rat heartily. And now, come along in and warm yourselves. Yes, come along, field mice, cried the mole eagerly. This is quite light, old times. Shut the door after you. Pull up that settle to the fire. Now, you just wait a minute while we... Oh, ratty, he cried in despair. We've nothing to give them. You leave all that to me, said the masterful rat. Here, you with a lantern. I want to talk to you. Now, tell me, are there any shops open at this hour of the night? Why, certainly, sir, replied the field mouse respectfully. At this time of the year, our shops keep open to all sorts of hours. Then look here, said the rat. You go off at once, you and your lantern, and you get me. Here, much muttered conversation ensued, such as, fresh, mind, no, a pound of that will do. If you can't get it there, try somewhere else. Yes, of course, homemade. Finally, there was a chink of coin passing from paw to paw. The field mouse was provided with a basket for his purchases, and off he hurried. The rest of the field mice, perched in a row on the settle, their small legs swinging, gave themselves up to the enjoyment of the fire. A Little Winter Cheer the rat, meanwhile, was busy examining the label on one of the bottles. I perceive this to be ginger beer, he remarked approvingly. The very thing. Now we shall be able to mull some ginger beer. Get the things ready, mull, while I draw the corks. Ginger beer is like root beer. It did not take long to prepare the brew, and soon every field mouse was sipping and coughing and choking, for a little mulled ginger beer goes a long way, and wiping his eyes and laughing. They act plays, too, these fellows, the mole explained to the rat. Make them up all by themselves, and very well they do it, too. They gave us a capital one last year about a field mouse who was captured at sea by pirates. Here, you, you were in it. Get up and recite a bit. 
the field mouse addressed, got up on his legs, giggled shyly, looked around the room, and remained absolutely tongue-tied. His comrades cheered him on. Mole coaxed and encouraged him, and the rat went so far as to shake him, but nothing could overcome his stage fright. The now mute field mouse was saved from further encouragement by the sound of the door opening. The field mouse with the lantern had reappeared with a heavy basket. Dolce Domum, home sweet home. There was no more talk of play acting once the contents of the basket had been tumbled out onto the table. Under the generalship of Rat, everybody was set to do something. In a very few minutes, supper was ready. As they ate, they talked of old times. They clattered off at last, very grateful indeed. When the door had closed on the last of them, Mole and Rat kicked the fire up, drew their chairs in, and discussed the events of the day. At last, the Rat, with a tremendous yawn, said, Mole, I'm ready to drop. That your own bunk over on that side? Very well, then I'll just take this one. Rat clambered into his bunk and rolled himself well up in the blankets as slumber gathered him in. So it's time to reflect. You're going to follow your teacher's directions with the time to reflect. Number one, were your predictions correct about how the themes of friendship, loyalty, hospitality, responsibility, and irresponsibility play a role in the second half of the chapter? Why or why not? Number two, at the beginning of the read aloud, Mole looks around dismally at his empty, dusty home and experiences the blues over the state of his home. How does Rat help Mole? What themes do you think Rat's actions demonstrate? Number three, while Mole and Rat are foraging for food, who comes to the door? And what do they do? Number four, what words could you use to describe how Mole feels at the end of the evening? Do you think he's glad that he is back in his own home for the evening? Why? How about Rat? Is he comfortable in Mole's home? And number five, what kind of friend is Rat? And how do you know? My class, you're to take one of these questions and answer it in your journal. Remember to pause the video while you take time to write. So as you continue to reflect, in your journals, you're going to write. Choose one of the following questions and write your answer in your journals. Be sure to use the conventions of standard written English, which means capitalization and punctuation and spelling and all that good stuff, proper grammar. Number one, how is the theme of hospitality demonstrated through the character's actions in today's read aloud? Number two, close your eyes and imagine you are in Mole's home after he and Rat have cleaned it up. Describe what you would perceive through your senses to answer the following. What do you see, hear, feel, smell, and taste? Number three. The story today is told from Mole's perspective. How do you think the story would be different if it told were from Rat's perspective? Pause the video while you write your answer. Our word work for today is forage. Foraged means to look around and search for something. Say the word with me. Foraged. Squirrels forage for acorns in the fall and store them away for the winter. Can you name other, any other animal that forages for food and the types of food they forage for? Use forage in your sentence. So what part of speech is the word foraged? Ah, it is a verb. It's an action. Okay. Continue your hard work, and we'll talk to you next time.